Maybe we can call you L, short for 11. We know you're excited and can't wait for the next season of the TV show Stranger Things. We're excited too. And it's why we're bringing you all the best facts about the show from the weirdest to the most basic ones. Some of these you might already have heard of, but there's a huge chance that you're still missing out on quite a number of others. But not to worry, in this video, we will be sharing top Stranger Things facts that will totally give your mind a shock. Ready? Let's dive right into the action. But first, a simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We are giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad, mini or macbook pro it's all your choice so be sure to leave a like comment the keyword subscribe and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway it's really that simple there is a real life time travel project the show borrows ideas from while we already know that the stranger things show is completely fictitious there are some real life motivations that inspired the story like you must have already heard there are several conspiracy theories that the united states is conducting the craziest experiments on children while there aren't real Real life monsters and a demogorgon, these claims are kind of hard to ignore considering several unexplained phenomena in the past few years. Now, Stranger Things was initially named Montauk and was set to be filmed on the far edge of the Long Island Peninsula. The show had also several references to the real life Montauk project and they represent much of what Eleven goes through in the first season. Funnily enough, the show also had a number of alternate titles which Matt Duffer believes is embarrassing. He says he hopes they never get leaked one day. This is not the first time the Montauk project is inspiring a film project. Project. Jaws, a 1975 film about a monster terrorizing a small community, was inspired by the Montauk Project. We're really hoping all these conspiracy theories are fake because nobody's ready for real life monsters. Also, fans have located a similarity in the premise of Stranger Things and an episode of The Twilight Zone named Little Girl Lost. In this episode, a little girl goes missing after she has been safely put in bed. Her parents are worried and they break into a search. They soon realize that they're hearing her cries for help but can't see her. It turned out that the girl had been transported to a parallel universe. More than 1,000 children were auditioned for the main roles. Since the show centered around children, it was only natural that the main auditions would also revolve around them. For the show, the creators auditioned 906 boys and 307 girls. And you know what's even crazier? The Duffer Brothers and the casting director, Carmen Cuba, sat through every audition. This was because they understood what it meant to take on each role and how serious every character had to be. To find the best, they made the young actors read lines from the pilot episode. While it took time to choose other actors, Gaten and Matarazzo, who played Dustin, was chosen immediately. During the audition, the producers and casting directors said they turned off most audition tapes after five seconds, but when they got to Gaten, something was different. They said, the minute we saw Gaten Matarazzo, who plays Dustin, we basically cast him off the first tape that he sent in. When you see someone like Gaten and he pops the way he does, you're just like, this kid, we are putting him on the show, 100%. But finding Millie Bobby Brown took an old tweet and endorsement from Stephen King. In 2014, Stephen King made a post praising the acting skills of Millie Bobby Brown. He wrote, Brown, the girl in Intruders, is terrific. Is it my imagination or are child actors a lot better than they used to be? Imagine having this sort of backup. If the king of horror said you were good enough for a horror show, then you were good enough. This was the vote of confidence Brown needed and the creators were lucky to have grabbed her that early. The Duffer Brothers played a huge prank. If playing pranks on people is your definition of fun, then you should meet the Duffer Brothers. While the show was still in the shooting stage, the team ordered a fake dead body prop from the fractured FX for Will by a role played by Noah Schnapp. The prop had been so realistic that it could have passed for the corpse of the young actor. Seeing an opportunity to have some fun, the creators of the show invited Noah's mother to a dark closet and showed her the realistic prop slash corpse of her son. Immediately, she freaked out. But this wasn't for long. The brothers told her it was a prank and she ended up falling in love with the prop, which is kind of weird too. She became so attached that she took pictures with the prop and shared it with her friends. Okay, did you think that was too much of a joke? Well, the Duffer brothers didn't think so. It took a while before now. Netflix allowed swear words. Did you notice that the children were not allowed to use cuss words in the first season of the show? This was because Netflix vehemently pushed against it. However, in the second season, a few cuss words were allowed after the main characters refused to allow the show's creators to remove the words. Netflix then allowed the producers to shoot alternative takes with the option of being completely removed if they didn't like it. But after watching the first two episodes of the second season, they decided it was fine. The show has a motivational story behind it. Now, the Duffer Brothers didn't pitch this show to Netflix as soon as they got the 
the idea. In fact, they pitched to over 15 other networks, but all of them rejected the idea. They didn't reject the idea because it was a children's show, but they wanted to make it into a children's show, and the Duffer Brothers didn't want that. Other networks wanted something else. They believed that since the show had a Jim Hopper, a role that was finally played by David Harbour, they could make it about him. He could be a strong male lead that comes to save the day. But the Duffer Brothers knew what they wanted, and they didn't stop until Netflix gave them a deal. So if you've been pitching your ideas, but keep getting rejected, now's not the time to give up. Sadie Sink was not so good at skating at first. Sadie Sink plays the role of Max, a character with very good skating skills. But Sadie wasn't always this great at skateboarding. In fact, she had lied about her skateboarding experience during her audition. This meant she had to take extra lessons to improve her skating skills. Did it work? Well, I think it did. The young actress was also almost dropped from the role, although it wasn't because of her dishonesty about her skating skills, but because of her height. The show creators believed that she was too tall for the role, but her acting prowess could not be overlooked. Sadie is also a vegetarian, and in the scene where Dustin and the other kids put raw meat on the train tracks in the fight against the demi-dogs, Sadie has admitted that it grossed her out a lot. This was because the team had mixed watermelon and raw beef to create the right effect. The Demogorgon was played by an actor. While the Stranger Things uses a huge amount of special effects and VFX, the Demogorgon in the first season was a real guy. The role was played by Mark Steger, and the effect was achieved by making him wear the costume of a monster. His real arms were covered, and he was given fake monster arms, which surely made him look scary. It was so scary that some of the younger actors were terrified when they first saw it. To calm the actors, the creators told them to think of the monster as a funny monster, like the ones in Monsters, Inc. Furthermore, in an interview, the Duffer Brothers mentioned that they wanted the Demogorgon to be unique and they wanted him to be recognizable everywhere. To make this possible, they had made the Demogorgon have a defined silhouette, and this made it extremely easy to recognize and, of course, to draw. It's so simple that an eight-year-old watching the show can sketch an image of it. Lucas's bandana. It's hard to hate the character of Lucas, and if there's anything more we like, it's the fact that he wears a camouflage bandana all through the show. While this might seem like an item with potential to hold double meanings, it doesn't. The idea was brought on by actor Caleb McLaughlin, who insisted that his character wear a bandana. Even though the producers didn't really like the sound of it at first, it turned out to be a great idea. It's kind of hard to imagine Lucas without his bandana tied around his head. The Upside Down has a story of its own. Fans have repeatedly complained that the Upside Down has not been properly explained in any of the seasons. The Upside Down, even after three seasons, still remains complicated. But the Duffer Brothers have an entire backstory for it. They just haven't infused it into the show. According to Variety, the brothers have an intricate document of 30 pages which explains the upside down, how it works, what it means, where the monsters come from, and why there wouldn't be any more monsters. There is no doubt that most of this will be revealed in the upcoming season. The show has a connection to the video game, Last of Us. The show draws parallels from a number of past and present shows, movies, books, and The Last of Us, an award-winning adventure game that also has a similar situation. In the game, a man named Joel accompanies a young girl on a journey in a post-apocalyptic United States. The brothers explicitly said that the show was inspired by the game, and this is evident in the characters of Ellie and Eleven, who both have remarkable qualities. And look at the names, Ellie and Eleven, quite similar, right? Also, Joel is reminded of his dead daughter whenever he sees Ellie, and this is the same for Sheriff Hopper. The movie pays homage to several other references, even in the titles, as most of them are a nod to horror classics. An example is in the title of Chapter 2, The Weirdo on Maple Street. It's a direct reference to a short story by Stephen King, which is titled The House on Maple Street. Fans also believe it would have been a reference to the Twilight zones, the monsters are due on Maple Street. The Duffer Brothers were bullied in high school. Just like most of the main characters on the show, the show's creators, the Duffer Brothers, were bullied in high school. They even said in an interview that they really hated high school. But this made it easier for them to write about the four geeks who were regularly bullied. And with that, we wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.